In this video, I want to go through the different workflows that are available to you in NVIDIA AI and what they mean and how they work. So let's get into it. When you're in your NVIDIA AI page here, you have this select a workflow dropdown. You don't have to use this workflow dropdown at all. You can use this main prompt box here and type in in full detail what you want NVIDIA AI to do, and that's pretty much what it'll do. But picking a workflow from here will help structure that prompt so that it's covering all the main bases. You'll still want to put in your details and make sure you fine tune it the way you want. But the workflow selection, make sure that you're sort of covering the big stuff. You're, you're checking the big pillar boxes of what needs to be included. So let's take a look. We have YouTube Shorts, and if we select YouTube Shorts, what you're going to notice is that main prompt window, it goes away. And instead, you'll get presented with this which asks you, it says, create a YouTube Shorts about. So finish that sentence. So you say what you want it to be about. You might say the five largest animals on the planet, or you might say the places to visit in Rome. It's already starting that prompt for you with create a YouTube Shorts about, and then you start typing your prompt. Then you're going to select whether you want to use a male or female and what type of voice that you want. You'll pick your options on subtitles and subtitles can be anything from no subtitles at all to I want the ones that are going to have a couple of words on the screen all the time and then highlight the one in yellow, the word that's being spoken right now. Then you'll pick your how you want it to use iStock. Remember, iStock is the one that has a credit limit per month in any of the plans. Now there's no iStock in the free plan, but any of the paid plans, iStock is the one that's limited. You have a cap of how many iStock assets you can use per month. So if you wanna say, no, don't use any iStock in this, you make sure you're not using your credits, or you can say, you know, you use it normally, uh, you know, or, or prefer using something else. Now remember, you still have Storyblocks, Pexels, Pixabay, Shutterstock, I think all those are available as options for stock media. So if you, eliminate iStock, you're not cutting out all the options for stock media. If we pick the YouTube explainer workflow, the first thing it's going to ask us is about time. Create a, how, how long do you want it? Three minutes, 15 minutes, 15 seconds, YouTube video about. And then in these about sections, you can fill in your topic, what you want it to be about. Maybe this is about the, the 10 largest animals, or this could be an explainer about something specific, you know, how something works. Uh, and then optional creative directions is the next box. And this is where you can say things like uh, you want it to be light and humorous, or you want it to be deep and mysterious or any of those kinds of things. The background music, you can type in there what you want. It gives you some examples. Obviously, you'd probably want that to line up with whatever you've said in this uh, optional creative box up here. And then you'll have the same voice settings. Do you want a male or female? And what? Accent of voice do you want? Uh, subtitles is the same across all of them. Use watermark text. You can change that if you want. You can have in video AI put the watermark on there and you can change whatever it comes up with. It just said Bob 617. I have no idea other than Bob and putting a random number how it put that together, but hey, it is what it is. And then of course the iStock question comes up as well. Recent events video, this one is a little bit different because here we're talking about something that's gonna be in the news or something that there's gonna be news about. So this could be your typical news story, something that's you know made national, international, or I guess even local news, but this could be your typical kind of news story, but this could also be maybe something like a uh, certain software that you use has made some announcement about some updates and they have a blog post about it. Well, that would be a pretty good use case for this because in the box, you can tell it, create a recent event video about, and you'll say blah, 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 softwares, uh, new feature announcements. And then down here in this next box, you're telling it, search the news and also check. And this is where you can tell it, go to this URL or go to Wikipedia or tell it somewhere specific that you want it to look to find information about this recent event or news or information. Now, I must caution you that when it comes to news and recent events, these things are going to be very specific. And in video AI, in my opinion, doesn't do the best job at finding specific video and image clips. So you're probably going to want to, during your editing process, go find some of the images and videos that are really relevant to your story and put those in manually. They'll, it'll provide you plenty of the filler, the B-roll that might make sense. That's cool. And if it finds 10 clips for your video that still work and you have to add in everything else, hey, that's 10 clips you didn't have to go find. The rest of these are all the same from the other prompts. 
you choose the voice. Do you want a male or female voice? Do you want it to be in a Californian accent, a New York accent, a transatlantic voice, young British voice, Australian? You, go, you see all the options there. They're the same in all of them. And then choose subtitles on how you want to use iStock. Now, in recent events, you don't have to just think of that as being limited to recent events. If there's a historical story that you want to tell or something like that, and you have specific resources that you want it to look at, That'd probably be the perfect place to do that is in the recent events because you're going to tell it to go look at news, but you're also able to give it some specific direction in where to go find the information that you want to be included in your script. The last workflow that we're going to look at is the script to video. And this one is really important if you have specific things in mind. If you want to do uh, the five most interesting animal facts and you've got those five facts already in your head, well, then this is the place to go with that. You know, use something like chat GPT if you need to and convert that into a, a decent script. And then you can paste that script that you've put together. You can paste that in here and it's going to use that script word for word. What this is going to do is it's going to not write the script for you. It's going to use your script and then it's going to do the rest of the stuff. It's going to come up with the voiceover. It's going to go pick the stock images and videos and those kinds of things. Again, you may, you probably will have to change some of those. The settings on this one are a little bit different. You get to create a video, YouTube video, TikTok video, or Instagram video. So you can specify what uh, platform basically you're going to if you want, or you can just leave it on video and then you just paste your script in. It can be up to 3000, what is it? 3000 characters. You pick what you want your background music to be like. It gives you some examples here. And then you decide the gender of voice and the style of voice or the accent or locale of the voice as it may be. And off you go. Now, regardless of which workflow you use, or if you don't use any workflow at all, and you just type out all the details you want in the main prompt box, NVIDIA AI is going to take a minute, and I don't know what the robots are doing in the background. They're starting to put things together, I guess. But after the robots get started doing whatever they do, it's going to pop up with another set of choices for you to pick from. The first of those is the audience. That one is pretty straightforward. In this example, it's asking me whether the audience for my video is YouTubers, social media enthusiasts, or digital marketers. That's pretty straightforward. I can pick which one of those, and I assume it's going to gear the script of the video at least toward whatever that audience is selected as. The next one is incredibly confusing to me. I never really know what to pick here. And so the look and feel. And in this case, my choices are minimalist, modern, bright, or professional. And I don't really know what the difference is there or what impact it'll have on what the finished video looks like. If my look and feel options were something like cinematic, cartoon, or whiteboard, yeah, I could figure out what the difference is between those. But they all just seem so similar to me, regardless of what video I'm making. These options will change based on what you've selected in the video, and I'm assuming they change also based on what the AI is finding to put together your video. I don't really know. Again, what those robots are up to, mystery to me. Uh, but then the next one is platform, and that one, of course, is very straightforward. In this case, it's asking me, is this video going to be for YouTube, LinkedIn, or Facebook? I don't know exactly what impact that selection has on the finished video, but it's easy enough to pick what you're doing for where you're doing it. If you have any tips or tricks on the workflows in NVIDIA AI, whether you use them, how you use them, or if you ignore them altogether and just type out a detailed instruction in the main prompt window, let me know what you're finding works or doesn't work. And if you haven't tried NVIDIA AI yet, of course, there's a link in the description. Check it out. I am an affiliate, so if you end up making a purchase, you don't have to. Use the free stuff. But if you end up making a purchase at some point after following my link, I may receive a small commission at no additional cost to you. Now, I sincerely appreciate it. As I've said before, got a bunch of teenagers in this house. They eat a lot. Oh my gosh, they eat so much. And food is very expensive. So many thanks to you. And thanks for hanging out with me on this video.